Meine sehr geehrten Damen und Herren, einen schönen Ladies and Gentlemen, hello to all of you this Friday afternoon and welcome to the press conference after today's meeting of the Supervisory Board. These four gentlemen will be soon giving a brief statement. First of all, the Premier of Lower Saxony, Stefan Weil, the Chairman of the Supervisory Board of Volkswagen AG, Hans-Dieter Pütsch, the Chairman of the Board of Management of Volkswagen AG, Herbert Dies, and the Chairman of the General and Group Work Council's Bernd Ostelow. Mr. Perch, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. von westen Ladies and gentlemen, I bid you welcome and thank you for taking the time to join our media event here at Wolfsburg today. After intensive deliberations on supervisory board, we will now present this year's planning round for the investments jointly scheduled by the VW Group for the next five years. At this juncture, let me underline that the financial foundation on which these enormous investments rest is both sound and resilient. The recently released key performance indicators for the first nine months of our financial year have underlined this impressively. We are confident with the investment decided now to be able to make the Volkswagen Group fit for the future. The overarching target of our group strategy is to become a leading enterprise for sustainable mobility worldwide and to remain that. This transformation of the Volkswagen Group is something we drive forward massively, focusing with our investments on all major future fields of mobility. This is putting the Group's strategy resolutely into practice, nothing less. Among the central decisions taken and deliberated on today are investments planned at just under 60 billion euros in electromobility, hybrids, digitalization and further future topics. This is more than 40% of planned overall expenditure in tangible fixed assets and the entire research and development investments for the next five years, which means another increase over the last planning round, where the proportion was around about a third. Volkswagen continues to implement its group-wide electrification and hybridization campaign without failing to stay the course and strategically develop new business fields. Dr. Dies is going to inform you on the details of this after my contribution. Then the State Premier, Stefan Weil, and our uh, Chairman of the Works Council, Bernd Oslo, the group, are going to explain the impact of our decisions on our sites in Lower Saxony and our employees worldwide. But first, let me address a matter this is particular, which is particularly close to my heart. The Supervisory Board today has resolved to appoint Mr. Markus Dusmann to the Group Board of Management with the responsibility for the division Audi, which means that from the 1st of April next year, he will become the chief executive officer to lead our group company Audi. We are pleased to take on board with him one of the most experienced and distinguished experts in automotive industry. We are confident that he will develop the full potential of Audi. At this juncture, let me thank Bram Schott for his work. In his capacity as the Chief Executive Officer of Audi AG, he has started everything a premium brand needs for the fundamental transformation it takes to prevail in these tumultuous times, a corporate strategy that is sharply focused on starting a new era in automotive history, and he has started a strong corporate culture of sustainable change and lived and breathed it as a role model. He has reoriented the brand towards more progressiveness, and he has created the sound financial basis 
with the Audi transformation plan so that the realignment of the brand can be done within Audi's own means and strengths. I thank Bram Schott for his untiring commitment and work and that he now leaves the company corresponds to his personal long-term planning. Uh, for his uh, next steps outside of this group, I wish him every success on behalf of all my colleagues. All the very best. Ladies and gentlemen, the Supervisory Board and the Board of Management have taken momentous decisions today and found good answers to make the Volkswagen Group fit for the future. A overall package is the result that shows the will to shape things and to develop things. With the investments decided today for the years, ranging from 2020 to 2024, Volkswagen in the coming years, we will be at the helm of the transformation of the automotive industry. This is our plan, and we remain firmly committed, convinced that we will prevail in implementing this. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, today at the Supervisory Board meeting, we talked about our investment plan for the next five years. It was presented there, and we also gave an outlook for the entire next decade. The automotive industry, as we all know, is in the midst of prof a profound transformation. And this requires a clear strategy from us. The system transition toward electric mobility is top priority for us. In the next 10 years, we will be launching 75 new electric vehicles. In that time period, we intend to sell 26 million batteries battery-driven vehicles. Current developments have confirmed our plan. They show that we're on the right track. At the Golden Steering Wheel Awards in 2019, for the very first time, electric cars were not assessed separately. They had to go up against their competitors in one and the same test class. And what's even more important, Three electric vehicles won the awards in the mid-range and high-end class, in the mid-range SUV class, and in the big SUV class. And I'm particularly happy that the Audi e-tron won the last of these awards. So, electric mobility is gaining ground, unstoppably. Ladies and gentlemen, we intend to live up to our responsibility. One percent of global carbon emissions comes from the passenger cars of our group brands. And without a quick transition to electric mobility, we will not be able to win the fight against climate change. It is the only effective alternative to the internal combustion engine, which is available immediately at affordable costs and can be implemented quickly. Electrification, ladies and gentlemen, is not a bet. We have a strategy at Volkswagen and we have a very concrete implementation plan. Which means that we will also be able to meet the much more stringent EU fleet limits starting in 2020. Electrification is by far the lowest cost way of achieving carbon-free mobility, and it's thus the right way to do it. It's right for society, it's right for our workforces and for their jobs, but ultimately it's also the right way to do it for our shareholders. In many countries around the world, lawmakers have recognized this and are providing support and funding like in Germany to ensure that it, electric mobility is rolled out quickly. The misleading and difficult discussion is going to wane. In just a few months, people will stop talking about open technologies for drive systems, at least not for passenger cars in the medium term. Electric mobility will then begin to prevail, and you are going to be able to see that in the higher number of vehicles available from basically all cars car manufacturers. You'll see that in vehicles that are on the road. You'll see that in the expansion of available infrastructure. And ultimately, you'll see that when you hear from friends and acquaintances who are thrilled about the advantages when they tell you about their electric vehicle. And that is why for electric mobility, for hybrid vehicles, and for digitization, between, 20, between 2020 and 2024, 
We will be spending some 60 billion euros. That's more than 40 percent of our planned budgets for research, development and production. Compared to the last planning round, in 2018, these investments have once again been increased by 10 percentage points. We are beginning at a very high level already and are earmarking additional funds because we are persuaded that the system transition toward electric mobility starting next year will pick up additional momentum. The critical path for the ramp up will be not just infrastructure but also the availability of battery cells. And that is why Volkswagen is also in investing in its own capacities for developing and producing battery cells. My colleague Stefan Sommer is working full speed ahead to set up production in a joint venture with Northvolt. Ladies and gentlemen, the transition toward electric mobility requires resources and they have to be achieved by means of good operational business based on our traditional activities. And this means that we have to continue to become more efficient, more productive, and more profitable. All of our brands have kicked off initial programs in this area and can achieve many more synergies than they have via the group. In production, we are focusing even more on the strength of our group of brands. Vehicles from different brands on the same platform will increasingly be produced at one and the same factory. This simplifies production and logistics, and it also simplifies cooperation with our suppliers. By 2025, productivity to at our uh, factories will increase by 30 percent, and this is a figure that we are sticking to. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in a market environment which is difficult everywhere in the world, we think that we are on the right track to achieve our targets for 2019. This is due to the attractiveness of our products. This is also due, though, to the performance of our team and to the outstanding position of our premium and volume brands. I, too, would like to take this opportunity to thank Bram Schott in particular, because at Audi, he moved in in a very challenging transitional phase and kicked off initial important changes. And I'm also happy that we have Markus Dutzmann, an engineer now, who's going to be taking over the helm at Audi, and he will provide new and stronger underpinning to our commitment to Forsprung Dirk Technik. Ladies and gentlemen, on the occasion of the start of production of the ID3 in Zwickau, I said that an industrial nation always has to reinvent itself again and again, because only then will it endure. And this, of course, applies, and in particular, it applies to our own company. We have accepted this challenge. Volkswagen is on the move, in particular and especially in view of the fact that there are clouds on the economic horizon. We are transforming things, not just our pr products, but also our culture. When I became CEO of Volkswagen in April 2018, I made a commitment to making our company an ethical, an honest, and a transparent company. Ethics, integrity, and compliance are and remain the foundation for our business. Together with our monitor, Larry Thompson, and his team, we are working on achieving these things intensively. We have faith in our capabilities, in our strategy, and in our highly motivated team. And above all, in our group of brands, we have a lot of potential that we will leverage step by step. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the decisions from the planning round are made in a difficult environment. So everywhere in industry, employees make cuts. Outside of the Volkswagen Group, 10,000 of employees fear for their jobs. Every single day we hear news about new austerity and staff reduction programs. Complete sites are closed down, the value added goes abroad. In the middle of this crisis, today's resolution of the supervisory board conveys a signal of strength. Again, we invest huge amounts in products, services and research. In this, we rely more decided than ever before on the sustainable success of tomorrow, and that is hybrids, immobility, and digitization. All of this is an important signal for the team. For with these investments, we secure 
the jobs of more than 670,000 employees worldwide in times of uncertainty, about 200,000 of these here in Germany. And what is clear, Volkswagen Group takes transformation seriously. It is serious about the shift towards e-mobility. After Zwickau, Amden and Hanover, one thing is certain. All in Germany will also uh, profit from electrification because uh, an investment is made in one of these plans. Also, Dresden is uh, taking the right steps for the future. These investments of our groups are made out of a position of strength that is also reflected in the latest quarterly financial figures. On this basis, we have your representatives on the supervisory board have seen to it that the topics concerning the future will not pass Germany by. We brought immobility into our factories in Germany and we shall continue along this avenue. Years ago, with the Pact for the Future, we have laid down how this big transformation can be done in a socially compatible manner. Today, with the roadmap of digital transformation, we continue along these lines. We see to it that cost efficiency and employment protection remain targets of equal ranking. But one thing is clear, and let me state this very clearly, behind the scene, we are under the same cost pressure as everywhere in this uh, industry. And that is why during the planning round we had the one or the other tough discussion. But that is the way co-determination works also with the uh, Board of Management. Dr. Diesper confirmed this. It is one thing to argue for the best solution in a matter, but then on the other hand, the question is how can this be brought about in Sometimes we have to struggle about this. Our culture at Volkswagen has been characterized for decades by the fact that we have settled conflicts in, an, in a cooperative manner, i.e. at eye level between core determination and management. This joint understanding has always been part and parcel of our success and of our strength. With our expectation regarding core determination, the strong position of the employees, representatives of Volkswagen has become a world market leader. And that's why I would like to say very clearly here in public that uh, employment and cost efficiency remain to objectives of equal renting. This holds true of our employees' representatives at the supervisory board, but also of our work as employees' representatives on the shop floor and in the offices of the administration. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenges of our industry are too big. That is, we must not waste our energy on internal matters. And even if the auspices of uh, the times were uh, even uh, better, but the decisions of the planning rounds point towards a path of determination and resolve. Sometimes even courageous. And now I wish the politics would display the same resolve and support the change of our industry and the introduction of e-mobility to the best of their capabilities. Good afternoon, everyone. The planning round is an important event every year, not just for the six Volkswagen factories in Lower Saxony, but also for the region and the entire state. Volkswagen is by far the most important company in Lower Saxony. It's not just a global company with its roots in Lower Saxony. It is also very active and important in our country, in our state, too. And against that backdrop, I can say that I, with satisfaction that over the next five years, Volkswagen will be investing more than 60, 16 billion euros in Lower Saxony. That's quite a pretty penny. That's more than 3 billion euros every year in our state of Lower Saxony. And for the biz for the economy here in Lower Saxony, it makes a big difference. But it's not just a question of quantity, it's also about quality. If you look at our Lower Saxony plants, you see how systematically the company is transitioning toward electric mobility. I think it's quite interesting to see that if you look at our different plants in Lower Saxony, Wolfsburg, for example, the Golf Station Wagon our Estate and the Tiguan will be available in the Tiguan, in a hybrid version. Now, then in Hemden, there will be the Aero that's something like an electric car that's in the class of today's Passat, but there will also be produced there an ID Next. It'll be an electric vehicle that's comparable today to today's Tiguan. I saw the car yesterday for the first time and I'm impressed. And I'm certain that that is going to be one of Volkswagen's most successful vehicles in the next generation. I'm so happy about this because in Emden, as people know, there are worries about capacity utilization. And secondly, the region of Eastern Frisia has having other economic troubles. And I 
I think that this is good for that region. Then, Hanover, they are, they are preparing, preparing for the ID Buzz. That's the electric vehicle that has certain external similarity to the legendary VW microvan. And they're preparing for cooperation with Ford, too. Then in Brunswick, they're preparing for the production of ex an extended battery uh, extended battery production of systems. And then Salzgitter, they're uh, expanding the line of business for battery cells. And then you can say the same thing for Osnabrück, too. In Lower Saxony, you really see the transition. And this means that this is actively safeguarding the future of our different plants, not just in terms of numbers, but also what's being done. I think that this is real progress, and it's a course of innovation for a key part of our economy in Lower Saxony. All in all, though, the result for me is that I must conclude that it's clearly visible that Lower Saxony is going to be a center of German electric mobility. And I think this, too, is a contribution to safeguarding our future. For us in Lower Saxony, the automotive industry is of major importance, and that is important to not stay at a standstill and wait for things to change, rather to tackle things actively and shape the future. And this is visible in concrete terms now. And finally, I would like to tell you about one concern in this context, electric mobility. Electric mobility is uh, based on one important thing that is changing to renewable energy for energy generation. And we must be concerned that the expansion of renewable energy in Germany is flattening out. Wind energy is in an obvious crisis. And this is a point that's not just important for the companies in that sector. Rather, it's also important and has consequences for other areas too, such as for the automotive industry, which is in a transition process that the federal government explicitly wants. So I'm not worried about the creativity and the systematic approach of businesses, in particular Volkswagen, for moving forward in this transition. But I would like to emphasize here expressly that the political framework has to be established so that this big process can become a success. And the state government in Lower Saxony is going to work hard to ensure that's done. Thank you. Thank you very much. In a good tradition, Mr. Kruger asked to speak, then Mr. Schwarz, Ms. Jansen, and Mr. Robert. Please do wait for the roving mic to arrive. Please, let's take it here to the first row where somebody wants to speak from the floor. And in Krug, Automobile Bar from Hamburg. Mr. Dies, more frequently than we're used to from VW, or at least I have been, you've emphasized hybridization. Has there been a certain change of paradigm in this planning round, or at least a slight shift of uh, focus from pure electromobility, BEVs, to hybrid vehicles? Mr. Poch, will Volkswagen become one of the worldwide leader leading enterprises of uh, sustainable mobility, or the worldwide leading uh, enterprise for sustainable mo mobility? Do you think these um, curtailments and cuts uh, we see, is that a passing weakness or is that a long-term weakness, not for VW particularly, but for the industry as a whole? And uh, that's for Mr. Östelow. And Mr. Uh, President Weil, you said uh, electromobility is going to be a focus uh, for the political parties. Have, have you... Uh, also tried to become the site of the Tesla factory uh, where many regions are competing for uh, being chosen as a site. To attain our climate targets, the only path is a full electrification of vehicles, particularly since we know that even for larger ranges, 50 to 70 kilometers, uh, very often you can't guarantee that there are charging points and there are very expensive um, and complex cars by combining these two technologies. But we have to accept that so long as we don't have the infrastructure uh, fully in place and so long as we can't fill our cars with uh, renewable energy-based electricity and power. And this is why the new Golf, which is the most important new vehicle, is uh, starting with a plug-in and mild hybrids, new petrol, gas and uh, 
diesel engines, of course, we have to further develop the conventional drives. This has always been the case. This is part of our program. But we are focusing very much on electric cars because that needs assistance in its breakthrough. Of course, we need uh, assistance to develop renewable energy sources and also the charge point network and will mainly achieve that with a fleet business that use mainly electric cars. Let's continue with the second question. Well, maybe it is too humble when we say it is our leitmotiv and motto to become one of the worldwide leading enterprises for sustainable mobility. But you're aware of the fact that this has been our motto for several years already. I believe it, it you know, it comes us not to brag with our targets and uh, speak in superlatives. And please don't take this to mean that we've let up in our ambition. Quite the contrary is the case. And let me tell you that you should not construe this to mean that we will compromise in any manner, as Mr. Dies has rightly emphasized. We've got a clear concept and strategy, and we will implement that with all uh, deliberate dogged perseverance that you used from us. Well, Mr. Cook, now things are put into practice, as Mr. Dies said, the transformation hasn't really begun. We're only starting to forge ahead with e-mobility. And what we're seeing now happening in the motor industry, a shift of jobs to Central and Eastern Europe, when the transformation in e-mobility uh, accelerates, we will find even more dramatic job shedding in the motor industry, which is why IG Metal is concerned and our colleagues in on the works councils in other corporations that there will be a long-term uh, reduction of jobs or shedding of jobs in the motor industry in Germany. On Tesla, Premier Weil, Volkswagen, Tesla has started earlier and it has a, an accepted plan uh, for all sides to, for the transition into the new era. And this is paying dividends. This is my uh, impression. Uh, te well, on Tesla, like five, six other federal states, Lower Saxony has um, offered to be the site. Uh, Tesla had, has now decided to go with Brandenburg. My friend Dietmar Reutke will be pleased to see that, and I'm happy for him. But, uh, you know, we will see battery cell production in Lower Saxony, simply because, quite discernibly, uh, particularly many electro-mobility vehicles are produced. This was one of the first steps, and surely not the last uh, battery cell manufacturing plant decisions that were taken. Yes, please, you have the floor. Well, thank you very much. First, a question on Audi. How many of these 60 or 33 billion euros are invested during that uh, period uh, will be invested by Audi, your group company? Then, Dr. Dies, I uh, saw your appearance with Elon Musk. I couldn't be there, unfortunately, and watched the video clip. Watched you talk to one another. Is there more? <laughs> and the question, to put it in more con concrete terms, uh, are there any plans on cooperation, possible um, possible cooperation between Volkswagen and Tesla? On Audi, you will get the Audi information after the Audi supervisory board meeting next week, after the supervisory board has met of Audi. Dr. Dies, on Tesla. No, there are no considerations, no plans for cooperation here. We've got different modular toolkits and entirely different approaches. Tesla is one product, one market actor, and we've got to cover all the group brands, and we work in many different world regions. Of course, we do uh, follow what Tesla is doing with uh, attention. Tesla is successful very fast, and uh, very it's our yardstick and uh, role model in the speed and uh, deliberation of implementing things. Uh, we, Our corporate culture says that we need to uh, rethink and uh, put into question every idea every now and then. And we are uh, trying, of course, to learn from everyone. From the OEMs, uh, Tesla uh, is, or we are the uh, traditional OEM that Tesla takes seriously. So there is a, a healthy way of um, competing with one another. Question in the second row. Well, this topic has been mentioned, but my question goes to Mr. Dies on the Emden side. Electric cars are planned to be built there, but the wind power 
uh, producer has announced in that region now the utility to shed more than 1,000 jobs. Are those bad news for you? Are you relying on renewable energy sources? Can you do anything? Well, the degree of renewables in our power mix is, is not only uh, dependent on this one utility that has uh, got into trouble, but of course that worries us because electric cars only make sense in terms of CO2 reduction. And if you change the power production with renewable primary sources, here in the north, wind has come a long way. We have days in Lower Saxony where we have almost 100% wind and solar in our power generation mix, where we have no coal-powered plants contributing. Around Emden, we have enough uh, CO2-neutral energy sources, but it is indeed an alarm sound. As the State Premier Weil said, uh, we do depend on a successful conversion to power generation towards renewables. And of course, um, we have got to um, foster renewables, and uh, we seem to be hitting a limit there. Christoph Auerbach, please. Also in the second row. Christoph Haubert from Bloomberg. Two short follow-up questions, if I may. You've talked about electromobility. You are investing considerable funds here. How much are you investing in the Chinese joint ventures, as it's the biggest and leading market of, uh, for electromobility? Regarding the next years, we assume that it will remain that. And second question, the, which funds are invested in times uh, where Mr. Ostello has rightly pointed out that this industry is undergoing upheavals? Just. Uh, uh, mentioned the targets for 2019, Mr. Deeds, you are on a on the last lap, uh, poised to win. What about 2020? The operative margin without non-recurring effects between six and a half and seven and a half percent, and the net cash flow of at least 10 billion euros. If will you be able to hold that um, promise? Well, that's a very wide range of questions here. Uh, you're right. The largest investments for e-mobility are indeed uh, taken in China. Two plants are being built uh, at the same time. Uh, let me estimate that around about 60% of investment is going to be uh, taken in China, not on our books because they're non-consolidated companies, but of course the expenditure and the capex is incredible. And uh, it gives us the economies of scale, which make us very competitive in making electric vehicles here in Europe and the rest of the world. We are on a winning track and we are confident, you know, we had a good sales uh, October and uh, we are confident that uh, by the end of the year we'll be able to live up to expectations and our forecasts. The next year will be two marches. This is well known in the motor industry. In 2020, 2021, the fleet targets are beginning to take their impact. So we've got to improve the CO2 emissions across the fleet in these two years, 30 grams roundabout, so that electric cars will be caught upon and, of course, plug it in hybrids uh, to be successfully launched in the markets. The ID3 is uh, being ramped up and has its SAP they taken is almost on the market and we have the Audi e-tron also out there plug-in hybrids a whole number of them the Golf will come with plug-in hybrids and those are the most efficient measures to improve the fleet targets as a whole because with all these vehicles we've got you know for the electro segment excellent contribution margins and uh, so that you know we are putting a great deal of effort into that so that our uh, margins and um, the other figures are kept up to the expectations particularly since we are able to make to leverage synergies we have programs to do things more uh, jointly on the platform and coordinating things even more it will be an ambitious target which we will however keep 
Ja, Philipp Vetter von der Welt. Philipp Vetter von der ne? Welt. Ich habe zwei Fragen, die ich Mr. Dusman stellen kann. Also, die erste Frage ist, wie wird es am 1. April sein? Ich denke, er würde es wünschen, dass es eine Sperrklausel von BMW gab. Ich würde es ein bisschen früher machen, aber wir haben die Blockenklausel von BMW. Es ist nicht das Final, aber was haben Sie offen, dass BMW sich früher starten wird? Sechs Monate früher. Die erste Frage. Die zweite Frage ist, was ist die Entscheidung für die Multibrand-Faktorie? Wir planen eine Entscheidung im Laufe dieses Jahres. In der Türkei aus Situation in Türkei. At present, is Turkey still in the race, if I may say so? Or would you have to look for an alternative site? And will you take uh, a decision in the course of this year? And then concerning Elon Musk and Tesla, maybe you can give us a summary as to what uh, signal is emanated uh, here for Germany as an industrial center, and what does it mean for the automotive industry? Mr. Puch and Mr. Diesmann. And Mr. Dies will take the other questions. Well, the situation is correct as you presented it. Mr. Diesmann would have had a, to abide by a longer blocking period, but then the decision was taken of the BMW supervisory board to the end that as per the 1st of April he will be available to us. The details you would have to ask from BMW in order to give you a concrete answer, neither have we offered anything in this respect, nor has anything been requested from us. Mr. Dies, well, the plans for our plant in Turkey have been considered in view of the political situation and the discussion between Europe, NATO and Turkey, so we have stopped it for the time being, quite rightly so, because it would have been responsible to continue, but we have fallback plans. We've got two alternatives that we could make use of. Nevertheless, we think that Turkey will and should remain part of Europe in the long run, also part and parcel of our economic area, that it will then develop again into a market, and that hopefully the situation will stabilize will be stabilized there so that uh, at the end of this year or in the course of next year we will take to take a, we're going to take a final decision. Elon Musk, yes, I was also surprised by the announcement of the battery factory in Berlin. I think it's a very good decision for the location, for the site. It will also show that not only Volkswagen is committed to e-mobility, but also other companies make enormous investments into this category of vehicles. I think it will also boost competition. Elon uh, must use the cell chemistry, others use cell formats, battery cell formats, different Method, methods, but I think you know, Musk is also striving to enter into an exchange with the German automotive industry. At the West Coast, he is in an ecosystem. I mean, in the East Coast, of course, you are right at the right source for software development, so it's a very positive position and situation there. But on the other hand, they have but little automotive industrial culture, also as regards suppliers and technology. And I take what this is mere speculation, mind you, that he also has now access to a battery automotive manufacturing uh, basis, which he's looking for here in Germany. But I think it, was, it is very positive, and I'm very glad that he has taken this decision. From the FP, I heard that you were attained this year two targets. To what extent super credits and the phase-in regulation of 5% will play a role here? And the question on Turkey was already asked. Now I have another question concerning the batteries. Which of these plants will be pure e-production? What will be the distribution? More e-mobility? other than conventional internal combustion engine cars. Answer, well, of course. You must imagine that these 30 grams of reduction in our fleet target is a tall order, a big and an ambitious uh, target. In the past, we used to 
uh, have uh, saving of two to three grams for the whole fleet with new and generation. So this is a totally different uh, dimension now. Of course, we make use of all the possibilities that we have also the phase in regulation of supercharges. I think 2020 and 2021 have to be seen as one block. As a whole, we have to attain the target of 30 grams for Volkswagen. Plants have been devised for that, but the year 2021 will be needed as a year of transition. Concerning the sites, Turkey, well, this is not about looking for alternatives, but we would then continue to produce these cars in existing plants of the network of factories here in Volkswagen. The cars that are converted, the plants that are converted to e production, now the first one is Dvikov, where we have finished that already. The next plant will then be Emden. The next question is asked of Ms. Stefan. By Mr. Stefan, sorry. Yes, I have a question to ask of Mr. Dies. Could you comment on the future of the Negazon plant? And do you have any news concerning the cooperation with Ford? And what are the earnings uh, outlooks for that on that basis? First of all, on Neckarzun, the decision that the supervisor board has shown this yesterday, we have presented a few vehicles where a nice RD derivative was, could be seen, which will also then utilize the capacities of this plant. All the varieties for the plant assignments that have not as yet been finalized at the RD board will then give rise to a very good capacity utilization of Necrosome and also safeguard the future of Necrosome, that much we can say. The partnership with Ford is developing quite well. The first vehicle, the successor model of today's Amarok, was uh, decided at a meeting of our design decision-taking group. It will be a functional, good pickup vehicle on a joint platform, so that's very promising. Ford is running to plan, and the earnings potentials, well, it's a high triple-digit million amount with which we will improve both, both parties, Ford and we. I have two further requests for the floor, and then I would like to close the meeting. Thank you. I have two questions. First of all, digitization. When I hear that, I also think of digital uh, autonomous driving. That's part of it. Yesterday, Daimler more or less said that their autonomous driving activities would shrink. They wouldn't be spending as much money on that. No, they had never mentioned a specific number for that. And maybe you could tell us for your last planning round what you are, what changes you are making for autonomous driving in this planning round. Then secondly, all in all, if I understand you correctly, it'll be about 140 billion euros of total investments that you're going to make over that time period. Can you perhaps tell us if you have anything, a budget for mergers uh, and acquisitions, and if there is a possibility to uh, take on a share of certain European champions or take on certain brands, would you uh, give that some positive thought? Thank you. Well, autonomous driving, in particular robo-taxis, we were always very much more, well, more conservative than our competitors. We took a lot of time to think about that first and to come up with the right position for the company. And therefore, at the beginning of this year, we already decided that we would share the cost, the expenses for that with Ford in a joint venture. And this is currently being tested by the authorities, but we're confident that by clustering resources of Ford and Volkswagen together, that we can bring the Audi activities that we had in Munich into the joint venture and come up with a very good team. And it's done under the uh, leadership of our commercial vehicles uh, people in Hanover. We've got a very strong team there too. So 
we too are convinced that it will take a long time before we actually see fleets that make economic sense, which autonomously can bring people from A to B. But nevertheless, we as a big car manufacturer would be well advised to participate in this technology development. We've got to have the know-how for that. We've got to have the people and the materials for that so that uh, autonomous driving can be done for cargo, for people, passenger cars, trucks. So we're participating in this, but we're sharing the investments here with Ford. I think we've already published the numbers, but we're talking about something in the billions that will be spent over the next five years. And point two, consolidation in our industry. Well, first of all, we're big enough. We have a very broad brand portfolio, and we are well positioned around the world. Our brands have further potential already. There are very few segments very few profitable segments that we don't already cover with our brands, and therefore, consolidation, well, that's not our top priority. Okay, thank you. Then, the final question, go ahead. Markus Klaus and Dow Jones, thank you. I've got two questions for Mr. Dies. You said Mr. Dusman will uh, give new luster to the Audi brand and uh, take advantage of potential they have. What's at the top of your agenda? What are your demands? What, are you what will you focus on? Margin, volume, technology, leadership? Maybe you can tell us something about that. And then question two, MEB, licensing. You talked about the deal with Ford and your partnership with them. Are you conducting further discussions right now? Or are you thinking about further partners? Can you say something about that? And then finally, the objectives for 2020. Have you said anything about that? If not, maybe you can tell us about that. Objectives for next year. Are they realistic? You've told us about them previously, or are they out of reach now? Thank you. Well, they are realistic. Well, I think that Audi, more than almost any other company in the automotive industry, has an outstanding slogan to determine what Audi is. It's Vorsprung der Technik. And Audi really does this in many, many areas. They are technology leaders. They're leaders in the premium segment with elect electromobility and the e-tron. And when you say, well, give the brand further luster, I'm just saying that they can and express this commitment even more in new vehicle, in new technologies, and in software and in services. Forspunkter Technik, technology leaders. Well, Marcus Dusman is going to strengthen this commitment. He has the right background and the right attitude and the right experience for that job. And we saw that today that he has a lot of commitment and passion for this. And I'm certain that the entire Audi team will be motivated and will bring Audi further forward. MEB, the platform, licensing, delivering to Ford, well, we're on the right track there. We're in the process now of coordinating designs. And for our, our colleagues at Ford, well, uh, they're very happy and satisfied with what we're offering them. There are some discussions in China about the platform, but it would be too early to talk about that already. Objectives for 2020. Yes, we are sticking to our objectives for 2020. We saw a discussion today. It's going to be very demanding, but we've got a huge opportunity to achieve these objectives. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much to the gentleman up in front, and above all to you who have spent part of your Friday afternoon with us. We wish you a nice uh, evening and a safe trip home, and have a nice weekend. Thank you.